In today's JavaScript tutorial, we are going to tackle another JavaScript problem. We're going to look at how you can take an array of objects and remove those that are duplicates. Before we get started, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. And remember the discount links to all my courses in the description. Also, my website has a list of all the tutorials I've published. There are over 200 now. The description also has a link to earn script. And remember, you can use script to get free courses. Let's say we have an array of objects. And some of those objects are duplicates. How do we know they're duplicates? Well, maybe they have the same ID number, which we know is to be unique. If we want to eliminate duplicate objects with, that have the same ID number, how would we go about doing that? Here is the array we want to use for the test case. So notice we have an ID and then F name and L name. So very simple objects. They're contained in an array, but notice that some of them have the same ID. 32 and 32, also 65 and 65. And so we want to go through and eliminate those duplicates. Now, there are a couple of approaches to solving this. The solution I'm going to propose uses maps. But go ahead and pause this and give it a try. Post your own solution in the comments. Now, as I said, I'm going to use a map to help solve this problem. If you're unfamiliar with maps, I will link to a tutorial I've done on this collection type. This particular solution I saw in a Medium post that I will link to as well. I really like the application of maps with the reduce method, so I wanted to share it. Now, also, if you're unfamiliar with the reduce method, you'll need to know that as well. So I'll link to some tutorials on that particular method. Now, maps allow collections of key value pairs like objects. But maps don't have limits on what data type can be used for the keys. Also, maps have methods for working with the entries. In fact, for this solution, we're going to be using the set method, which adds a key value pair to the map, and the values method, which return all the values from a map. We'll be using those two methods. So let's jump into this solution. Now, I'm going to go through this step by step, because I think for a lot of people, if they were just to look at the code like it was presented in the Medium article, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. And so I want to make sure that we walk through it step by step and talk about it. So first, I'm going to create a variable, unique users. This is going to be the results, the end results, that will have an array but it will have only unique objects. It won't have the ones that are duplicates. And I mentioned we're going to do this with the reduce method. So users.reduce, the reduce method of arrays. Now, the reduce method is a higher order function. So we need to pass a function into it. I'm going to pass in an arrow function. Now, the function that we pass in can have several different parameters, but it should at least have the accumulator value and the element that comes from the array. So as reduce iterates through this array, it's going to grab each one of these objects one at a time. And we'll need a, a variable to place that into. And so I'm just going to call that variable obj. But we also need a second variable, and that's the accumulator value. So as map goes through this array, its purpose is to return a single value. That single value gets placed in this variable here. So each iteration through, it's placing something in this accumulator value. And so we want to start with that. Now that's going to be a map because the end result is I want an array of objects. So it's still a single value. But it's not like a single score or something like that, things we used reduce for in the past. This kind of shows the power of reduce as well. So the end result is going to be a map. And then we're going to do something with that map to get it into an array. So that's why I use the variable map here. Now, we will then have the function. But let me set up the accumulator value first. Notice with reduce, we can pass two things into it. We pass a function. And the function is going to act on each of these elements as we iterate through that array. So that's the first thing we pass into the reduce method. The second thing we pass into the reduce method is the initial value of our accumulator. 
So since I'm going to use a map here to set up that initial value, all I need to do is create a new map. So I do it like this. All right, we've got our accumulator value, our initial value for our accumulator. It's basically an empty map. So what are we gonna do with this now? Well, we're going to take that in this function, every time we get a new object, we're going to take that map that is in the accumulator value and we're going to add to it using the set method. Now the set method allows us to indicate a key and a value that's going to be added to that map. So for the key, let's go ahead and add obj.id. See right here, we're gonna add this as the key. Then what are we going to add as the value? For the value, we're simply going to add the entire object. So we're going to set up a map that has a key of this and the value is going to be the entire object. Now the reason we're using set to do this is because when we use set, if the ID is already, if the key is already in the map, it'll simply replace it with the one we're adding. And so we won't get a duplicate. We won't get two 32s and we won't get two 65s. We'll only get one of each. And that's the value of using the set method of maps to do this. All right, so here's our first step. And I'm gonna stop at this point. We're gonna take a look of what we have here before we continue on. So I'm gonna save that. And then I'll refresh this and take a look at the console and unique users. So we can see that we have a map. Let's just look at the contents of that map. Notice it has an indication of where it is in the map. But then if we open this up, the key is 32. The value is that entire object. So what we want in the end is we want a list an array of just these objects. Notice we now have unique. We don't repeat the key. None of those are repeated. We're able to get rid of that using the set method of maps, but we now have more than we need. And so we want to just get the values. See how the values each have the object. So we're going to use the values method of maps to do that. So I can simply just tack on the end here. Once this is all done, values and there's that method let's see what we get now so i'm going to save that and refresh and let's take a look at unique users now we get an iterator so the values method returns an iterator an iterator of all the values of that map so if we look in it we can see that they are all the objects object object so this still isn't an array of those unique objects we still have one more step to do. But since we now have an iterator, there are a couple of ways we can use to convert an iterator into an array. Um, I'm gonna show both of those. The first one is we can simply set up an array around all of this and then use the spread operator. The spread operator will spread those values out. And since it's spreading those values out from that iterator, they'll get put inside this array, which we've declared around it. So let's take a look at that and refresh again. Take a look at unique user. And now we have our answer. We now have an array of objects and they are all unique. We got rid of the duplicates. Now I said there's a couple ways to do that conversion. Another way is using array.from, the from method of arrays. It will convert an iterator into an array as well. And so it would look like this. So if I save that, let's just see, we should get the same results. Yes, we do. Okay. So kind of a neat application of reduce and maps to, in order to get unique values in an array. All right, please hit the like button and subscribe. And remember the discount links to all my courses in the description section. Click that bell button to be notified about new releases. I really try to release a new tutorial each week. And once again, thanks for watching.